we really need strong lighting to bring it up. I think that's what's going on. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Uh, so we'll move him back in and when I do a rebuild on the lighting we'll revisit it then if it doesn't look quite right. But in the meantime let's get him into place. Because we have to remember when we're viewing it in Substance Painter, Substance is using a, um, a HDR map to display it in the viewport. So it's, anytime we use a really reflective material, we're not going to get the same sort of reflection that we're going to get in Substance because Substance yeah, is using a, a different HDR map. I don't generally play with the HDR map very much, so I don't. Yeah, Panorama is the one that's using the environment map. And, and that'll affect how it looks because it's it's a shiny met, uh, material. It, it's not noticeable when we've been working on wood because wood is not is not reflective. So the wood doesn't really well not very reflective anyway. It doesn't really. Um, it's not really affected very much by a HDR map, whereas metal like this will be. So let's get our little Buddha into, into place. Just going to make sure my, uh, my clock here is actually on the ground and not in it. Uh, Sambone says, yeah, I see it's reflecting the walls. And Sniper says, that explains why people export a map from UE4 to use in Substance. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, and again, you can export like a, a map that'll give you your environment here for whatever you're texturing up in Substance. As opposed to just working with the standard uh, maps, panoramic maps that are built into Substance. I did not want to move the clock. I want to move the Buddha. And I want the Buddha to be more dramatic, make a more dramatic statement, so we're going to make him bigger. Not too big that you can't get past him though. I think a plant over in this corner will look good, so let's see what we've got here as far as plants go. Just want to see how much room I've got in this corner. Have a look at a monsteria here.
Let's bring in a pot. Um, in, in fact, let's bring up one of those. <coughs> pardon me. Uh, one of those urns that we created. So one of these, I think. Again, I'm just going to grab the um, violets. And the dirt and the pot. Uh, sorry, Hamburn, I just noticed your question there. Um, can you give an object a different environment map in UE4? Yeah, as Sniper says, if you mean to preview it, you can. Um, it's going to take on the environment, though, of whatever scene you put it in, if you're actually placing it in your level. Well. Uh, something something cube map in the shader as um, Smoke Bear Barbecue says. You can certainly do that. Uh, it, you, you don't tend, when, when you're working with these physically based materials though, you don't tend to want to do that. The whole point of a physically based material is to really reflect the environment it's sitting in. It's the whole thing that makes it real, look real. Uh, so you generally wouldn't want to change the cube map, say, for the object. This um, urn though is a good example. You can see it's not, it, until the lighting is rebuilt, it's really not, doesn't look like it fits into the scene well, but it will when the lighting gets rebuilt up here. I just want to make sure it's actually in the dirt. And it is, that's good. Um, we need another plant though in front of it to fill it up a bit more so I'm going to pull in uh, we'll use this little pot here and again let's grab some dirt for it And what plant will we put there? Um, I'm just going to move a couple of these in and see if I like the look of them or not. I'm actually make this monstera a bit bigger, I think. A bit too small. And I don't know that I like that bamboo looking plant. No, I don't 
don't like that one. Maybe. Maybe. No. No. We could put a palm tree there. Let's see if a palm tree would look good. Um, we also have some azaleas, <coughs> pardon me, azalea bushes which could look okay. We used them in the outside garden but there's no reason we can't use them inside as well. Let's have a look at an azalea first and see what that looks like and let's go with um, one of the pink ones. Again, I'm looking at the silhouette here to try and get a shape that will look interesting. Yeah. And I actually think we need something with height. Which is why I think maybe one of the palm trees will look better. We're getting our, our entryway blocked here. That's not really ideal. So, I think what I'm going to do is remove that azalea, uh, that monsteria, or Chanel as you guys call them in the United States. <laughs> yeah, um, the smoke roof says not enough space for walking. Yep, I agree. That's why I removed the monsteria and I put the palm tree in the corner so that we do have enough room here to, so that people could walk around. <laughs> I'm mad with power. That's exactly right. I just think that the palm tree fills up that corner a bit better than the monsteria did. Um, we could still put another plant here though if we wanted to. I don't know that it really needs it to be honest. Uh, maybe down this end we could have a little plant. So let's move our pot down the other end. You still think the Buddha and the clock are sticking out too far? You might be right. They could be. It could be a bit tight. Um, let's look at that in a minute, though. Let, let's get this little pot placed, and then we can look at um, at the Buddha and the clock size. So let's pop a plant down this end and I think um, <laughs> So 
something like that. Uh, Smurpery says uh, you need some dope paintings with big heavy gilded frames. I thought about that too. and uh, uh, That's something else I have thought about. I haven't created them yet, but I've thought about that. Uh, and Smurpery says something that you can bludgeon a man to death with. Uh, I, I really don't know that I like this plant actually. Yeah, I really don't know that I like that one either. A canoe, hey, how's things? What you been up to? I'm just trying to design my little section of the balcony here. Um, I think these need to go down. Well, I may scale them down just a little bit. How's your project coming, Kenny? And let's move these in a little bit. You're good, that's good to hear. You've finished up your scene, you're now rendering the final. Good to hear. Because last time I saw it, it was looking pretty cool. I might just rotate this Buddha around a little bit. Again, making things less centered always looks a bit more interesting. So instead of having the Buddha facing forward, putting him on a bit of an angle, just makes it look a bit more interesting. The same sort of thing we did with the pots, but not making them straight on, but putting them on an angle. I, that, I, I think that's enough room for people to walk by Smurfberry. I don't think that that's too too close. I mean, it's a balcony, so it's gonna, it's not going to be very wide to begin with. Uh, but that, I think, gives people enough room if they wanted to, to walk through. Some sort of painting here might look cool. Again, though, I don't have one made yet, so... Are you going to be doing a uh, animated thing of your scene, Kanu? They're saying you're rendering the final. You're going to do some sort of. Are you doing a real time uh, demo for it, or are you doing a rendered animation movie for it? I'm just not sure how you're doing that. I know it's for your school, so I was curious as to how they want you to present it. I'm not completely sold on this grouping. There's something that I just, I'm not happy with. I just don't know what it is yet. I 
It's just something not quite right. Well, that Buddha's on floating above the ground, so let's push him down a little bit. That's okay. There's something, something, something that it's just not quite right. I'm just going to move around here a little bit and look at it from a, a few different angles. I wonder if, if putting a candelabra here might look interesting. Uh, Candy says, I'm doing it in UE4. Yep, I thought you were. For now, I'm um, baking the final lighting for, and we'll use screenshots and then maybe do a, um, a minute, uh, man, matinee for it. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> they still have matinee inside of UE4, but they've moved on to sequencer now, which is the new matinee, if you want to call it that, inside of UE4. Are you ready? Um, which may be what you mean to use. You can still use matinee, but sequencer is the new the new tool that they created in UE4 for 4.18 and up. Same sort of thing. It's just it's just a bit you can do a bit more with sequencer than you can matinee. Um, I won't really be using either. I'm going to set up my cameras and then render them out and put them together in um, Adobe Premiere. Uh, I'm going to bring in one of the candelabras, I think. The sequencer, yep, yeah, cool. I'm going to grab one of the candelabras here that we're using in this corner. And we'll see what that looks like up there. Because there's just something about that grouping up there that I'm not quite happy with. We're not supposed to see in here. We're not, we're not going to be using this this room. <laughs> to finishing the scene Kenny was asking um, uh, no well close we, all we're doing the other, what we're doing now is we're doing the furniture and that's the last thing apart from doing the cloth physics and then I set up the cameras so we're, we're close as in once I finish placing all the bits of furniture in the building uh, then I can set up the cameras and I can start rendering it out um, I was pushing to get that done before I went on break over Christmas because I, I don't stream over Christmas and New Year. So um, after the next six streams, I won't be back until January. So from about the uh, 24th until about the 8th of January, I'm off. So I was hoping to get it all done before I went on break. It's just not looking good. <laughs> but I'll try because I, I still have to do the cloth physics as well. Oh, but the furniture is the last part that we really need to do as far as the major parts of the um of the level go.
Uh, I'm just going to turn real time on here because I want to see that lit up and watch OBS freak out, but it's the only way for us to get the light to work properly. You see when I bring that light in that our little Buddha statue uh, is lit correctly? It's because there's not enough natural light in this part of the building that the Buddha is looking a little dark. Uh, but um, by putting a candelabra here we can bring him up quite a bit. I think that'll probably be okay for when we want to do our cinematic. Um, I'm just going to reduce the size of this a little bit. I think this plant is a little bit too big. Uh, it also helps for us to see the gold on the front of the clock as well once that light is there as well as the interior, um, that decorative work we've got going on behind the glass inside the clock. Uh, lighting is really hard, Canu says. Are you saying my lighting is too hard looking or it's just hard to do lighting in Unreal or? <laughs> uh, to get lighting to look right yeah, it can be difficult. Unless you're telling me that you think my lighting looks too hard. <laughs> In which case, let me know. Uh, and again, in real life, we would not put a candelabra here amongst a plant like that. You probably end up getting burnt, but this isn't real life and this is our world and we can do what we want. In general, yeah. In general, it is quite difficult. They, they do make it easier for you in Unreal. If you just stick to lighting the scene as it would naturally anyway, like you have your light coming in from your windows or your light coming off of a, a lamp or a wall light or whatever, you'll find that the engine will, will make your scene look nice naturally that anyway. It's not like the old days where you used to actually have to place lights to fake stuff. The new lighting engine, the new lighting in the Unreal Engine handles all that stuff pretty nicely on its own but you're right getting a scene to look nice lit can be a challenge it's it's, it's not as simple as you think it is um, I think what we've got going on here will look okay though I, I think we've still got enough room for people to walk by yeah pretty much Kenny says yeah um, Again, I'm looking at the silhouette that we've got going on here to make sure that it's an interesting looking uh, silhouette to the objects. Like you don't, you want to try and avoid a silhouette where everything is the same height. You want to make a variation to make it look more interesting. I'm just going to turn real time off because OBS is complaining. Candy uh, says, "Will there be a demo for this scene? Uh, there'll be. A, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to create a cinematic, so there will be a movie file that I'll upload to YouTube. But the actual um, building itself, no. Once I've finished working on it, I'm just going to shove it in my portfolio and never look at it again." Um, so all, all I created it for really was so we could create a cinematic and I'll put the cinematic video up on YouTube and on Twitch under my video section but there won't be a real time that you can run through. I'll just shove the file in my in my folder for my portfolio and it'll sit there forever now probably once it's done. Now the handbone says uh, lighting technical question what if I wanted to represent a light bulb that is on like in the real world, the bulb itself is bright. Is that a combination of emitter and bloom? It is. And let's give you an example of that right here. Let's look at these, um, these chandeliers. Now you see we have our light bulb and we have our, our, our light itself. I just turn real time on again so we can get rid of the actual light bulbs. Uh, so what's going on again? We're going to get this eye adaption happening. So it's going to go really dark for you guys. 
Um, it basically what I've done here is it's a combination of an emissive material on the light bulb and then a, a point light itself. Yep. So yeah, to, to get a light bulb, you've got, you create an emissive material for the bulb itself and then you place a point light where the bulb is. So the point light is what throws the light and the emissive light on the material is what fakes the light coming out of the light bulb, basically. You can see we've got that going on here with our little light bulb, including the, including the filament that's inside the bulb. And you can animate that the, the material on the filament if you want the filament to sort of dance around or move. Yep, you did guess completely correct. That's the way to do it. Wow, that eye adaption. Wow, wow. When you get close to a, a bright light source, wow, it gets really dark. Um, I probably will end up turning eye adaption off when we do our final cinematic because we're going to be simulating a camera or cameras and cameras don't really have eye adaption. That's only, that, that's, that's something that only happens with people. Um, so it's not really going to look natural for us to have eye adaption happening on cameras moving through the scene. You saw a light bulb earlier today, uh, Hambone, and, and started you thinking about it? Yeah. It's an interesting, it's something people would be curious about. I mean, when you're creating a game in a game engine, like a light bulb throws light, but because it's th these game engines aren't real, we have to fake it with um, a light source and an emissive material. So it's, it's, it's a good question. It's something people probably don't think enough about. But that's the way you do it. And that's the reason you'll see here on our sconces as well. Again, we've got our light throwing light here, but there's an emissive material on the actual sconce to make it look like it's glowing. So that it looks like the light is coming off the light, but it's actually coming off of that point light there. And we actually do have another light inside here, which is a spotlight shining up the wall. Just to fake our light coming up because the point light will only throw light in all directions, whereas the spotlight will throw it up the wall. So basically we're sort of faking it. You have to in a game engine. Or even in 3D, if you're doing a 3D render, sometimes you've got to fake it like that too. Um, yeah, so we've got our little corner bit over here done. Again, I'll turn real time on, watch OBS complain. Maybe if I don't move the camera around too much, it won't complain too much. Uh, and again, that, like I said, I, I thought it was a problem with the lighting and that's exactly what it is with our materials. They're coming up dark because this section of the building just doesn't have enough light. Um, but our candelabra fixes that for us. So that's good. So when we do our cinematic, uh, we won't have really black looking uh, Buddha. Um, I may just make some changes to this texture on the um, on the on the grandfather clock, though. I don't really like the way it looks through here, but we'll tackle that another day. I think. I think it's the height information. There's too much. It's still too high. Uh, Ken is asking me if it's fully dynamic lighting, it, three quarters dynamic lighting, uh, as I was explaining to Sniper Echo before. Most of my lights in the scene here are using dynamic lights, but there are a few of them that aren't, where I'm using static lights. The majority are dynamic, but there are some static. So until we do a lighting rebuild, we're not going to get a true uh, shadow, a, a true look on our uh, objects here. They look a bit bright because the lighting needs to be rebuilt. Now, oh, did chat disappear on your sniper? That's no good. Yeah, no, chat, as far as I'm aware, was still going here. <laughs> it's Twitch, you know, Twitch has some problems sometimes. Uh, so yeah, when we do a rebuild on the lighting, these pieces won't look quite so bright, so because they, they stand out a bit at the moment. Um, but I won't do a rebuild on the lighting until after I've got a few more pieces of furniture in, because we haven't rebuilt the lighting down here yet either. And we've added all these pieces of furniture as well. Uh, so we'll do that when we get a few more bits and pieces of furniture in.
Uh, but I think we may leave it there for today, guys. Twitch upgrading, yeah. <laughs> the false upgrade that they made everybody do. Remember when they've introduced a new beta site and they gave you an option to go back to the legacy site, but you don't have that option anymore. You're forced to use the beta site now, which is their new site. Uh, Smokeberry says chat stayed up for me, but um, my butts connection dropped the video stream a couple of times. Ah. Oh. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting you guys talking about problems with your internet because I wasn't going to mention it because it's, you know, I can't can stream and you guys don't know, but one of my internet connections has gone down and it's been down since Saturday. Now, thankfully, I have two internet connections, one that I stream with, which is what I'm doing using now, and a second internet connection that I normally use for my chat. Um, but I have, to, I have to run everything at the moment through my, my Twitch internet connection because my other one has been down and it's down, been down since Saturday. They can't tell me when it's going to come back up. Uh, the nearest estimate I've got is the 15th of this month, so two weeks away. I'm really not happy about it. Yeah, one is down. That's right, Sniper Echo. So like I said, normally I use two connections, one to stream on and one that I use for Twitch chat and everything else. We we're never going to finish this part. No, no, no. Well, you can see me streaming now. I'm using my one of my connections to stream. So unless you've been having problems with my video feed, which you shouldn't have because I, I'm looking at my drop frames and I've barely dropped any, uh, it should be okay. But yeah, no, there have been problems with the uh, internet connection here. Uh, Smurfberry says, in other news, the freaking cable modem is using a default username and password. Great. <laughs> Because you know, why would an ISP bother changing it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Because, you know, why bother changing a username and password? They're not important, are they? This is a VOD replay. It's not a VOD replay sniper. <laughs> it's live. I'm live to you right now on my second connection. <laughs> just telecommunications in this country is just terrible. We've got like two major companies, basically. It's not like the US where they've got half a dozen or more. We've got two major telcos in this country and then we've got the government doing their NBN. And get this, you know how I've been waiting for my NBN connection. They made an announcement, the company that's running it, which are run by the government, saying they're going to put put new, new uh, rollouts on hold for another nine months because people have been complaining about how slow it is and they've got to redo all the cabling. So my NBN connection has been pushed pushed back nine months. My one of my internet connections, which is through a company called Telstra here, has completely gone down since Saturday. So I'm relying on my other internet connection to stream. It's just been a nightmare in this country, a nightmare. So think yourself lucky you don't live in Australia. Uh, Smokery says, like you can literally Google a username and password of the modem. That's bad. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, terribly bad. You want to make sure no one can use your connection, but it shouldn't be. Uh, best get me to Ireland, that's what Sniper says. I'd like to actually go to Ireland, it's supposed to be very pretty. And green and wet, and they're all things that I like. Nice green grass and trees and a wet climate and a cool climate. All those things sound great to me. Uh, we will leave it there though for today, guys. Uh, I do want to thank you guys very much for hanging out with me and for watching. Uh, we'll be back on again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific in the United States, uh, midday in Australia, 1 a.m. in the UK. Uh, Sniper says we got potato internet, but we got potatoes for days. Well, I like potatoes. You guys know I love potatoes. Mashed, baked, any type of potatoes, always good. Fried. Um, do remember, guys, though, if you're not sure, you can follow my Twitter page at buildars 3 d to get a reminder because I always post when I go live. Uh, remember, you can follow the Discord. You can join the Discord at uh, just type exclamation Discord in Twitch chat to get an invite link to join the Discord server where you can post links to your heart's content because you can only post in Twitch chat if you're a sub. Uh, you're quite welcome, guys. I'll be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. You guys have a great night and thank you guys for popping into chat and saying hello. Adios to you, Smurfberry and Canoe and Sniper and everybody else that's been watching. Um, I do appreciate you hanging out and watching and I'll be back on, on again tomorrow 5 p.m. Pacific in the US. You're quite welcome, Hambo. You guys take care. See you guys.